Well, it's still early days in the two Bundesliga season, but we already find ourselves in a relegation playoff position. Hopefully, we can get above that when we take on Erzgebirger in the second game of today's episode. But before then, we are back in the DFB Pockle, the first round, our second time in this competition. But it's against Bundesliga opposition. Not ideal when you're not in form. Welcome to episode 31 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play our third and fourth games of our fourth season of the save. Our first one in the two Bundesliga as I said in the intro the first one is in the DFB Pockel. We host Cologne from the Bundesliga and off the back of that one of our former rivals from the Free Liga who are now in their second season up in the two Bundesliga as we host Erzger Burgers, the two home games hopefully at the very least. We can pick up some points in that second one and hopefully get ourselves outside of that relegation zone. But if you're looking forward to those two games in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we haven't gone far too much off the back of our first two games of the season at the end of last week. A draw against Eintracht Braunschweig, then a heavy loss against Holstein Kiel. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Played pretty well in that first game. Really should have won that one if we had been a bit better up front. And in the end, we did kind of get smashed away from home in that second game. So based on that first performance, still think we might have enough about us with the tactic that we did use late last season. And we have started this season with that hopefully we can avoid a relegation battle, but that second game of today's episode is going to be quite important. Otherwise, we might try and get on the front foot yet again like we did last season and try and turn things around nice and early because if we don't pick up points against a team like Erzgebirge, we might be in for a long struggle of a season here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but not much has changed off the back of that episode at the end of last week. In fact, the only thing that has really changed going to these two games, a few players have come back from injuries albeit are in the recommended 4.45 minutes and no changes to our first choice 11, the starters who will go in to these games today, but Mike Wosu and Matteo Coachella are both on the bench, which does mean those players, if they do improve their fitness during the course of today's episode, might feature in that Erzgeberger game. Otherwise, we'll have to get some game time off the bench to hopefully get back to a full 90 minutes, but that means that Danny Hermel is still at right wing as well as Ricardo Grimm in that centre mid on attack alongside Daniel Cueto, one of our new signings here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. But first up today, we do enter the first round of the DFB Pockle. We take on FC Cologne. These guys come into this one having not hit a Bundesliga game yet, so we might have a little bit of match fitness on these guys, even though their pre-season form is quite impressive. A 1-0 win last time out over PSV Eindhoven, but hopefully... We can make the most of this being their first competitive game of the season and maybe upset them, albeit we did take on a Bundesliga team last season in Stuttgart who were worse than these guys and did suffer a 6-1 defeat. So it's fair to say, even though our squad should be better this season, hopes are not high off the back of that. We do go down to the Free Liga and we are taking on Erzgebirge. This is a team that we took on a few seasons ago. They just finished above us into a promotion playoff spot and did end up going up the one of our rivals here in Germany. Hopefully we can do a decent job against these guys predicted to finish 17th. Only one spot above where we're supposed to be finishing in the two Bundesliga at home. Hopefully that is a game in which we can pick up some points. Hopefully a win. If it's a loss, might be time for us to change things like we did around a similar time last season when we did head in to that first DFB Pockle game. But this time it comes a little bit earlier and hopefully we can pull off a bit of an upset although it's not very likely, and at least give ourselves some confidence going into that second game of today's episode as we host Cologne in the first round of the DFB Pockle. And here are the team sheets for this first round of the DFB Pockle. There is our team as we ran through before, same starting 11 from the episode at the end of last week. A few players back though on the bench in Awusu and our new centre midfielder in Coachella. There is Cologne for free. Freeze the same formation, but obviously much stronger players than we have here. Hopefully, we can put up at least a bit of a fight. 
And near enough to smack bang through the first half. First highlight here is a corner in our favor. Leon Heike gets his head on the end of that one. Unfortunately, Lowe misses the target. Do we need to hit the target in this game if we're going to try and upset Cologne? But to be fair, so far, quite an even game, which is encouraging. Still locked up at nil all. And we're nearly inside the last five minutes of this one. So, so far, it's been a pretty quiet first half, which to be fair, we don't mind too much. Yet again, though, we are on the attack, which is very encouraging against the team from the Bundesliga, albeit they might be treating this as a bit of a pre-season game against a team like ours. But Ziani there does get a header off, but it's a fairly weak one and goes wide of the post. But as you can see, fairly even game as we do approach halftime. Stankovic picked up an early yellow card, which means we'll probably take him off at halftime as well as Panzu Ernesto because he is on a 6.4. But to be fair, that's not a bad first half at all against a team like Cologne from the Bundesliga, especially off the back of that 3-0 loss last time. Two Holstein here will bring on Vufak at right back in place of Ernesto and also Daniel Lehendu can come on for Stankovic on that yellow card. But apart from that, Fairly happy with what else is going on, even if we could be a little bit better in front of goal. So far, no goals this season, which is starting to become a little bit of a concern, but hopefully that will change in the second half, albeit you'd imagine Cologne might get a bit of a rev up at halftime. We'll get things back underway, still locked up at nil. And up to the R mark, no highlights so far in the second half, so we are certainly with a shout in this game, and because of that, we are going to bring on our usual first teamers from the bench, so Michael Wosu will come on for Danny Hermel, and also a debut for Coachella in a competitive game alongside Quieto, and hopefully that bit of extra quality could give us a upset win in the cup. And the events of the last 20 minutes of this game, we eventually get a highlight here in the second half. It's a throw in our favour inside the final third. A Hindu gets his head on the end of that one, puts that one across the other side of goal, but unfortunately can't quite hit the target. But so far, that's three highlights in our favour and none so far for Cologne as we're about to enter the last 15 minutes and just checking on some player fitness. We have one sub left, two players down to red hearts. So I think in this situation, we potentially... Might be better off just making sure we're a bit more solid defensively than an attack. Taking this game to penalties, probably not the worst idea if it's something that we can do. Of course, it will go to extra time if we do stay nil or at the end of 90 minutes. So I think what we might do, just still debating, but I think maybe the safe option here might be to bring on Mark Lamptey in place of Leon Heinke, as I said, just sure up that defensive side for these last 15 minutes or so, and hopefully can take this one to extra time at least. Still nibble. And we've just entered the last 10 minutes of the game, and it's a corner here to Cologne. The first highlight in their favour. Thankfully, Lucas Search does head that one away, albeit a Tilgan. Can't quite beat a Solio to that ball, and for the first time in the game, Cologne might have a chance. A Wusu there nearly got that ball back for us. It is cleared away there, but eventually it does find its way to the Cologne goalkeeper. Hopefully, we don't get somewhat FM'd here through their first highlight of the game, even though based on stats, they have had the better of things. Just haven't seen it so far from the highlights that we have seen up until this point. Coza plays that one over to Osorio. Squares that one. Krapikus in goal does absolutely nothing to try and stop that one, which is a bit disappointing. And they do get on the score sheet for the first real chance that they've had that we've been shown, which is a little bit frustrating, but based on stats, it is probably deserved. Nice ball there to put Osorio in behind. Squares it. Really think the goalkeeper there should be at least trying to stop that one, making its way into the inner box. And Lubasic will put that one away. And we go 1-0 down inside the last couple of minutes. And right off the bat, going a bit more attacking in terms of player roles and going to a higher tempo. We do have a free kick here. It somehow finds its way there to Ziani, the goalkeeper for them now. Has hit an absolute howler and we eventually get our first goal of the season. Albeit, it's a really ugly one. So off the back of that, I think we're going to change things back to how they were before we start this highlight, as you can see, a lot of players did go to a supporting and attacking duty. But now we are right back in this game. We'll hopefully take it to extra time at the very least. There you can see we told our guys to be more expressive as well as play on a higher tempo. We might keep that higher tempo just for the last couple of minutes of this game. But the goalkeeper there for Cologne has hit an absolute shocker. So a bit of justice there for what happened down the other end. No way Ziani should be scoring that. But he does. We finally get our first goal of the season and grab an equaliser with only five minutes left of regular time. And we have just ended injury time in this game. And it is a free kick here in our favour. And thankfully, Tilgan does head that one back to Linus Zimmer. Hopefully, we can hold on to the ball here and maybe create one more chance, albeit poor there from us. But thankfully, that ball finds its way to a Hindu. And we do get a chance here 
to hold on to things, but yet again, we give it away. Just struggling to control the ball here on that higher tempo. Big chance for Hector, but thankfully he blasts that one wide and it is still one all as we're about to enter what well, should be extra time, albeit one very last highlight over the added time that referee did put on Krapakas and goal a little bit of the first part of his name with that goal that we did concede, but the referee does blow full time, not much of a highlight. As you can see, Cologne definitely had the better of things throughout that game, but based on the highlights that we saw, did feel like most of them were in our favour, so I do think a one all result there after 90 minutes is a bit fair, and that does mean we have one more substitution to use here going into the extra time period. A few players down to Red Hearts, Lucas Search, Linus Zimmer, and Osman Tilgan, as well as the goal scorer in Jamal Ziani. I do see Osman Tilgan as the player with the lowest rating out of those out there on those Red Hearts. But thinking similarly to earlier, it might be a good idea here to shore up the defense while we can, and Linus Zimmer not going that well either. So I think what we might do here is bring on Zuck Polo Pipica in place of Zimmer at left back, as I said again, just trying to shore up that defence, and hopefully that will make sure we do not concede another goal and might even pinch one to steal this. Otherwise, it might go to penalties. One all, so we're about to start extra time. And nearly 10 minutes into this first half of extra time, the first highlight here is a goal kick in favour of Cologne. So they are going to look to pump this one deep, but at the moment, we are keeping it pretty level here with our opposition from the Bundesliga. So again, an encouraging performance at home, albeit a big chance here for Mayna, but thankfully that is a weak shot straight into the path of Krapikas. Might not be a bad idea here to go down to balanced for this extra time period. We'll see how that goes either side of half time and extra time, but it is still one all. And pretty much immediately from the restart after that half time and extra time, we do have a throw in here inside of the final third. Vufak here is on the ball. He tries to put a the ball there into the mix. It is blocked, but somehow finds Yanni right on the edge of the box. A Tilgan, big chance there, far post, but unfortunately, that one comes right off the post. Good chance for us there to grab a winner, but still one all with 10 minutes left before this goes to penalties. And we are inside the last couple of minutes here of extra time, and it does look like this one is going to go to penalties, and indeed it will, so it's time for me here to sort out the penalty order, obviously a little bit less familiar with some of these players who are new signings, but it's fair to say not the strongest group of penalty takers but we'll sort out this order and come back and hopefully can upset Cologne in a penalty shootout in the first round of the DFB Pockle. And we are back for the penalty shootout. I've just sorted out a camera angle so we can just look at this nicely for this penalty shootout. First up for us is our regular penalty taker in Eric Vufak, at least in terms of those still on the pitch. And thankfully, buries that one nicely in that bottom right corner. Next up, it is Killian for Cologne and he puts that one away nicely on the other side to make it one all. Next up for us is our striker and only goal scorer so far this season, in Jamal Ziani. He sort of sends the goalkeeper to the right, goes close enough down the middle, slightly to the left, and thankfully also scores his penalty. So a good start now, Mayna. Big chance for him late in that game. He did hit it straight down the path of Krapikas. This time, though, sends him the wrong way. Goes to that right-hand corner to all. Next up for us, Micah Wusu coming back from injury. He spent a fair bit of time on the pitch, and unfortunately, the goalkeeper stayed on his line. Awusu went the same way, a fair bit of power, but unfortunately, goalkeeper still came up with a save. Hopefully, Krapikas now can save this one, gets quite close to that one from Koza, but unfortunately, that one does find the back of the net. And now, one of our new signings in Quieto. We really want to score this one, albeit not a great penalty taker. And it's shown there yet again, we go straight down the middle, making life a bit too easy here for the Cologne goalkeeper. And now, if they score this next one, that will be that to be for you. would expect them to be a penalty takers. You saw some of those stats before, before I did sort out the order. It is Shikui there for Cologne. He buries that one bottom right corner. We push them right to the end, but unfortunately, we do lose out on a penalty shootout. But again, very much like the first game of yesterday's episode, I do feel like this tactic still has a fair bit of life in it as we can test some really good teams when we are on our game. It just seems to be a little bit more up and down so far in the two Bundesliga, even though we have just had that one bad result so far this season. It is fair to say against Holstein Kiel, but that one very encouraging, even though it might not be the strongest Cologne team. As I said, that might be a bit of a rotation team as they're about to head into the start of the Bundesliga season proper. But unfortunately, we nearly upset Cologne there in the first round of the DFB Pockel.
that in the end miss out on penalties. We'll come back shortly and hopefully carry on some of that momentum as we play Uzgeburga in the two Bundesliga. And we are back about a week off the back of that DFB Pogel first round game and we are back in the two Bundesliga taking on Erzgebirge, a team who are one of our rivals. We're exactly the same as we were for that first game of today's episode. Erzgebirge going with a 4-4-2, a Wusu as well. As Chikala are still only recommended for 45 minutes off to make their way from the bench in this one. But hopefully, off the back of that draw against Cologne after 90 minutes against the team from the two Bundesliga, we can pick up a few more points here at home. And it hasn't taken long for the first highlight in this game, six minutes, and it's a chance here for us to go out from the back. Krapikas to throw that one out there to Ernesto, and we start to make our way inside the opposition half. Ziani does get in behind, good chance for us here to get off to a flyer, but unfortunately, he does just get his shot blocked, but it falls to a Tilgen Hummel, will get an assist, and hopefully, now we have started to find our goal-scoring form off the back of that very fortunate one that we did score in the DFB Pockel against Cologne Ziani here. He's a bit old these days. Didn't quite have the pace there to get in behind Wilhelm, but thankfully Danny Hummel was there to tidy things up. And Tilgen slots that one away bottom right corner. And hopefully we can pick up our first win in the two Bundesliga, taking an early 1-0 lead. And just past the 20-minute mark, we go down the other end for another highlight in this game. It is a free kick to Erzgebirge Ziani there. Nearly controls it, but unfortunately, they do get the ball back here inside of the final third. They put that one into the mixer, and it is potentially a goal there for Erzgebirge. It looked a little bit fortunate. We'll just have to wait here for an offside check, but looking at for the sideline angle, did look like they were probably onside. Indeed, it was the case. And unfortunately, Matt Jajak does grab an equaliser there for Erzgebirge. Sisharic here puts the ball into the mixer. Does look like it wasn't really intended to be a cross, but the good header finds its way into that top left corner, and we don't hold a lead for long. It is one all about halfway through the first half. And only a few minutes off the back of that equaliser to Erzgebirge. Now they have a free kick, albeit deep in their own half, off the back of me adjusting some opposition instructions off the back. Of them making it one all, we put some good pressure on them there, though, and Ziani does get the ball back for us, but unfortunately... Can't quite link up with whoever that was who was trying to get in behind, but thankfully there they give the ball to Ernesto. Now Danny Hermel down this right-hand side of Tilgen far post. Good chance, but this time puts a bit too much on that one. He's had a few good chances now in today's episode through headers, but still won all. And unfortunately, cancel a highlight there as I do encourage the boys, albeit only a minute or two later. We now have a free kick, and Linus Zimmer runs that one straight into the path of the referee, but now a Tilgen does get somewhat in behind here, right on the edge of the box. It is a foul. We'll just wait here to see what VAR says, but I feel like that one might be just slightly outside the box. Hopefully, though, now we do a VAR. It is on our side, of course, the first time we have had VAR in the save in the two Bundesliga, but indeed, that one is not a penalty, and we won't even see the free kick. Still one all just past the half-hour mark. And inside the last five minutes of this first half, it was the Erzgebirge trying to get in behind with a long ball over the top. Thankfully, we deal with it. Now, a Tilgen, nice ball there for Ziani. Bit of a mess at the back. It's a pretty close to open there for Ziani. He misses the target. That should have absolutely been a goal so far. Very good first half, but unfortunately, yet again, less shots on target than the opposition. Now, a free kicker Tilgen puts that far post. They head that one away, but now Cueto starts to charge for long range effort, but unfortunately, Straight into the path of Bede and goal there for Erzgebirge. But that's a pretty good first half. Got a few more shots on target late in that game. But unfortunately, massive chance missed there from Jamal Ziani. And it is only one all heading into halftime. Pretty similar to that Eintracht Braunschweig game. But this time, there has been a goal to both teams. Leon Hunky will come off at halftime on that yellow card for Mark Lamdy. But apart from that, most players doing a decent job, and we'll get things back underway, and hopefully continue to play similarly, and we can grab a winner locked up at one all. And pretty shortly off the back of the restart, the first highlight of the second half here is a throw-in to Erzgebirge, who might have got a bit of a rev up here at halftime off the back of that first half performance, but thankfully Zimmer does win that ball back for us. Krapakas pumps that one deep, but straight into the path of Wilhelm on a yellow card. Now Nostia puts the ball in behind for the striker, Implitigen, he puts that one away for his fourth goal of the season already in only the third league game. That is not the response we wanted off the back of what was a good first half. And now we are trailing in a game we really 
should be winning based on what we did in that first half, but unfortunately, yet again, we've been a bit wasteful in front of goal, and considering that, I might just take off Jamal Ziani, because he's on a 6.6, .6 and missed that big sitter late in the first half, which could have put us in front. Danny Lua will come on for him, off the back of us going, 2-1 down. And only 10 minutes into the second half, we get another highlight yet again. It is potentially in favour of Erzgeberger. They put a ball there nicely in behind our defence. And Plutigen might have grabbed a double off the back of that ball from Berger. We are going to have to wait yet again for a VAR offside check. But again, based on the sideline angle, he did look on. Indeed, it was the case. And it has been a dreadful start here to the second half. Our defence somehow all over the place from that throw-in. And we are now in deep trouble. Two goals behind fairly early in the second half. And in fact, only a few minutes off the back of going 3-1 down, we are going to make another substitution because Lucas Search is really struggling out there on a 6.4. Daniel Hindu will come on for him. And nearly inside the last 20 minutes of this game, no highlights apart from those two goals so far in the second half to Erzgeberger. And I do think might need to bring on hopefully our difference makers off of the bench, similar to what we did in that Cologne game. Awusu can come on for Hermel and Coachella for Ricardo Grimm, but that will be all our subs used. Need to do something in a game which we haven't been that bad in, but we do find ourselves 3-1 behind. And we are inside the last five minutes of this game. We are playing attacking and also moved our players into more positive roles like we did going into those last few minutes of the Cologne game. Once we did find ourselves 1-0 down, but unfortunately, nothing we tried off the back of that early setback in the second half has worked, and we suffer what feels like a pretty harsh 3-1 defeat. We were well on top of them in the first half, but unfortunately, it was one all. Still wonder what might have happened if Ziani put the ball in the back of the net off the back of that mistake from the goalkeeper late in the first half. And unfortunately, Plitigen found his goal scoring touch early in the second half there for Erzgeberger. It is a 3 1 defeat, and that might just be enough for us now to maybe have to consider changing some stuff here with our tactic. And again, we only get one goal from that game, despite the fact, really, we should have scored more. And we might now find ourselves going down the table a little bit more once the teams do play their games on this third match day. That's a disappointing defeat considering we didn't look that bad, but somehow suffer a 3-1 defeat in a rivalry game against Erzgeberger. So off the back of a pretty good effort against Cologne in that first round of the DFB Pockel, unfortunately that one felt like a pretty harsh scoreline losing their 3-1 at home to Erzgeberger, considering the stats and especially how well we played in that first half, second half did turn a bit rubbish. But still, a 3-1 defeat there does feel harsh. We might be in for a tough season in the two Bundesliga. Here are the results that also happened in this match week. And as you can see, just above my head here, on the right-hand side of the screen, we do now find ourselves down in 17th on the table because of goal differential, only on one point from our first three games. We do need to potentially change some stuff here. I do feel like maybe just to try and get a bit more efficient in front of goal also shore up that defence and hopefully get ourselves out of the relegation zone sooner rather than later and hopefully as I said just try and give ourselves a chance of staying in the two Bundesliga for next season so a disappointing episode today pretty good first game I felt like taking Cologne to penalties a Bundesliga team also worth noting a quick look at the DFB Pockel if I can find a way to have a look at that competition some of the teams in that first round, I was just assuming last season that it was just the top four teams from the free league who did get into this competition, but also for some reason, a lot of lower league teams get in there, so it's a bit of a random way that teams do get put into the DFB pocket here in Football Manager, so it's quite harsh that we did get drawn against the Bundesliga team in the first round of that competition, but still felt like we put up a pretty good fight in that game, but then really disappointing 3-1 loss there against Erzgeberger, even though it did feel a little bit harsh. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. What we'll come back for in tomorrow's episode, obviously with us struggling, we might take our time this season, much like last season, towards the latter end when it was quite a tight race for promotion, we'll play Paderborn off camera, they are doing quite well early doors up in fifth, and we'll come back either side of transfer deadline day, we take on the team who are currently bottom of the table at home, that again could be a big game, hopefully at least we can pick up some points from that one against 1860 Munich, 
and then off the back of potentially doing some business on transfer deadline day, might have to try and find a good striker to come in who is an upgrade on our current ones. Just looking at our goal scoring touch early in the season, we will come back a few weeks later and take on Carl's Rue away. And those guys are doing a pretty good job early stages in the season. So hopefully we can at least pick up some points in that game against 1860 Munich. And if that is not the case, we might be forced into doing some moves on transfer deadline day. But coming up tomorrow, those two games, 1860 Munich and Karlsruhe, either side of deadline day. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.